Hey, how am I looking? How am I looking today, huh? Every day a little bit better. Every day a little bit better. I woke up at 4.30 this morning and I ran seven miles. A little tumble is not going to keep this guy down. I ran seven miles this morning. No tripping today. All right, everybody, let's talk, let's talk. So yesterday I, I uh, mentioned or I brought to your attention, maybe some of you already knew this, the uh, Dow Transport's down 300 points yesterday, was the largest drop in over a year, and it has a, seen a 6% decline uh, in the last two weeks, an equivalent decline of, of that magnitude uh, for the Dow Jones Industrials would put it around 20,400, okay? so. Just saying, maybe some cracks appearing, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, the dollar has lost back all of its gains from yesterday, so there continues to be dollar pressure. Gold, gold almost up at 1270. Now I had a guy on here, another one of these squirrely little commenters uh, a few weeks back, so uh, when gold was like, uh, I don't know, 1220 or 1215, I bought some gold listening to Mike Norman and the bottom fell out. <laughs> what a contrarian indicator. Well, now gold's at 1270, whoever that bum was. And uh, you ought to thank me because you probably made at least a little bit of money. I'm sure you didn't make a lot because you probably got out with a $2 profit. Uh, but now we're up at 1270. All right, so you have that. You have the fact that we are long oil from 44. We're in the 49 handle right now. So that's very good. I want to talk about First Solar. That was another one that some of you uh, mousy boys uh, mocked me uh, here. Uh, First Solar, we started buying last year at 47. The stock had come down from 70. We started buying at 47. It went all the way down to 25. I had subscribers. I, would, I never lost my bullishness. I was telling them. You know, be patient, have confidence. They're turning the corner. The company's turning the corner. They took a big charge late last year. They skipped over one generation of solar panel to go to their most modern, most advanced solar panel, which is going to be released in 2018, which is going to make them much more competitive. You see the earnings. The stock's at 49 now. We bought it from 47 all the way down to 25. I had some guy crying and scared little guy saying, I heard somebody saying it's going to 15. It's at 49 now, all right? So we, we made a lot of money on that position. Uh, just wanna bring that to your attention. There were a lot of mousy boys here um, and a lot of parrots. You read something somewhere about solar and the stock's gonna go down, all right? It's at 49 right now. So you have that going on. You have also in the sort of the big, 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 big macro picture here, more of a, of a geopolitical um, development, which I find very, very, very disturbing, very, very, very uh, maddening, maddening. I'm so angry. These stupid idiots in the United States Congress passing more sanctions against Russia, this relentless, never-ending attack against Russia, um, which this spineless idiot president that I am ashamed to say that I have voted for, he will sign that, he will sign that. He just met with Putin a couple of weeks ago. It looked like they were having a little bit of a progress in, in, in developing some personal rapport, and now he's going to sign this uh, these sanctions, most likely, I think. Anyway, uh, I think Congress would, even if he vetoed it, Congress would have enough votes to override the veto. But this is another escalation uh, between these two countries, which happen to be the two biggest nuclear superpowers. I don't have to tell anybody that. You already know. Another escalation uh, in a, uh, where relations are, are at the worst point ever, okay? Because Russia has now announced retaliatory measures, which, you know, I mean, I am not surprised. Russia has been turning the other cheek against the United States provocation for a long time. You know, and this was the last straw. I cannot blame the Russians. I cannot blame Putin. This was the last straw, but this is a dangerous escalation. Now, one thing I have been talking about is that the United States increasingly has been using the U.S. dollar as a kind of a weapon, a financial weapon. They've been weaponizing the dollar for countries that we do not like, that the United States does not like. It's like, okay, you can't play in our system anymore. 
We're going to block you out of SWIFT. You know, uh, we're, we're going to freeze transactions or we're going to freeze accounts. So that this using the dollar as a weapon can only work against the dollar in the long term. A lot of people, you've heard, oh, the dollar's going to lose its reserve status because nobody wants the dollar because it's depreciating. No, that is not the reason. If the dollar ever loses its reserve status, and I predict that it will, the reason will be because we do it to ourselves. When you enact these kinds of policies that make the dollar harder and harder to get for countries that we do not like for one reason or another, Eventually, the world's going to get the message and they're going to say, look, the dollar is, the, is the, the basis of most commercial transactions in the world, certainly a very important transaction like oil. If we are finding it hard to transact in dollars because we are being attacked uh, as a, a, a consequence of policy of the United States, then we're going to look for something else that's easier to use. We can't have, the world's going to say we cannot have these disruptions all the time because stupid idiot politicians in the United States and the American people, I have to say, who are basically very, very ignorant, not basically, who are very, very ignorant, think that this is some kind of great policy. So this is the beginning. If this is the beginning of the end, then this is the beginning of the end. Now, it's going to play out very uh, probably slowly. Maybe it's in, it's, it, it's you know... Uh, it has already begun, perhaps. I don't know. But you cannot do this. I mean, you know, when you start to weaponize the currency, when you start to make it hard to get for countries who you don't like, and it becomes disruptive to global commerce and trade, then the world is going to look for another me medium of exchange. That's what's going to happen. That is what's going to happen. Okay? That doesn't necessarily mean that... Um, the United States is going to plunge into some kind of, you know, recession or depression. It will change the, the character, the composition of the United States economy. We will be forced, forced to become an export nation, which is what they want to do anyway. So anyway, that is my... up. Oh, by the way, let me just say this. The, uh, the website is back up. Somebody asked me, did I shut down the website? No, and I wasn't even aware that it was down. There was some technical glitches. It is back up. Pitbull Economics is back up. So go there if you want to get zombie trading. Uh, the report's been doing fantastic. We had another great week of profits, all profits. Zombie trading. I am now finishing up the new issue, which is going to come out. I'll send it out either tonight or tomorrow. The new issue, which will cover Sunday night through uh, next Friday. A lot of stuff on there. A lot of trades. And it's been hitting it out of the park. Zombie trading. All right, everybody. How do I look? Hey, yeah. See you later. Bye-bye.